She felt like she was just going to burst. She was so filled with pride and love at that moment as she walked, as she watched her son walk across the stage and get his degree in engineering. It was beyond her wildest dreams. It was such a moment that she almost forgot all of those times that they struggled and argued over doing homework. All those times that they sat there and worked on math over and over and over again. All those anxious moments when she tried to figure out, how can I get through? I know he has learning disabilities, but what can I do to help him? All of those times when she watched the tears flood his eyes as he became frustrated with his struggle. But at that moment, as he got his degree in engineering, all those wounds were worthwhile. When I said something to him, he just shrugged his shoulders. His son and his father was struggling with a fatal disease. And he had taken off work again. He's self-employed. And so there are no vacation days. There's no money coming in when you're self-employed. But he took off work again to help his mom get his dad out of the house and into the car and into the clinic through the treatment back home again. She couldn't have done it without him. And so before I left, I just stopped by and where he was standing and said, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I said, it's a great witness to me. And he just looked at me and he said, well, what choice do I have? <laughs> I laughed and I said, excuse me, but I've been a priest for 43 years and I've been with many families in very similar circumstances. And I can tell you that there are people who make other choices than you have. You need to know that what you're doing is a real gift. It's a gift of love. And I just want to say thank you. And he just shrugged his shoulders again. It started when she was a little girl. She wanted to be a nurse all of her life. You know, it was one of those things that became very obvious. And so Santa, when she was still a young girl, brought her her own nursing kit. And with the plastic stethoscope, she listened to her dad's heart. And at times, bandaged up imaginary wounds, gave him inoculations with different uh, remedies that she had made up on her own. No, no, she always wanted to be a nurse. And so it was no surprise that when she got to high school, she volunteered at the hospital. And then she got her degree, and she was a registered nurse. It was something she always wanted to do. But she never thought that it could be something that endangered her life or the life of others. COVID struck. And there were long hours spent in the hospital. And there was the fear of becoming sick herself because she had seen fellow workers do that. Even greater was the fear of bringing something home and somehow contaminating her family and making them sick. It was something she never dreamed would be a possibility when she went into nursing. And yet, she said, what choice do I have? I need to be there. I need to be there. There are times that I'm the only human contact that that person has, especially in their last hours. I pray with them. I pray for them. She said, I don't have a choice. And I said, yes, you do. You do. But you've decided to do this. Another one wounded for the sake of love. I mention that because today we have the resurrection accounts in John's gospel. And it's interesting that John makes a point that when Jesus appears first on Easter Sunday and then again on the second Sunday of Easter, both times he shows them the nail holes. He shows them his side. You know, John makes a point that when the risen Lord appears, the wounds don't go away. The scars are still there. No, no, it isn't that he's made perfect. Not at least in the way we tend to think. 
No, the wounds are still there. And the question is, why did Jesus do it? You know, <laughs> poor Thomas, always given that label, doubter. Doubting Thomas, doubting Thomas. You know, that's like somebody being labeled Ron the Spartan or Dave the Wheeler Dealer, you know? <laughs> You know, to carry that badge all through your life and far beyond, really? And I, I feel some compassion for Thomas because Thomas was not someone who was tepid in his approach to Jesus. You know, he really believed in Jesus. Just a few weeks ago, on the fifth Sunday of Lent, when Jesus said he was going back to Judea where they had recently tried to stone him, he said he was going back, and Thomas said, let's go with him. Come on, guys, let's go with him. Even if we have to die with him, let's go. No, no, Thomas was a very firm believer. He loved the Lord. And yet, somehow, the way Jesus died, I suspect, was just too much for him. You know, we don't really understand the crucifixion. We, we kind of make it neat and tidy. You know, the cross that we have here, you know, Jesus looks rather placid on the cross. There's no blood. There's no gore. No, no, we make it look very sanitized. The truth is, is that when they took Jesus out, they stripped him of all his clothing, and he was hung naked on the tree on the cross. And he died there writhing up and down, trying to breathe. The Romans devised the method of destroying someone, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. Oh, no, 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 no. It was not nearly as neat as we make it. And Thomas saw that. Why would he do that? Why would he let that happen? I mean, here's the one that could change water into wine. Here's the one that could raise Lazarus from the dead. Why would he let them do this to him? No, it was all too much for him, I think. I, I feel compassion for Thomas. But you see, sometimes we forget why he did it. The reality is, my sisters and brothers, that he didn't need to die on the cross to free us from sin. You know, we've heard that many times, and I'm going, really? He couldn't have done that from heaven with a word, a command? He couldn't have freed us from sin? Isn't that the way he does it now? You know, that's the reality. He didn't have to come and die to free us from sin. But he came to show us how much we are loved, that he would share our life with us even to the point of death, death on the cross, the most shameful the most painful way to die. And why, my sisters and brothers? Why? We say again and again it was the nails that held his arms and feet to the cross, but it really wasn't. It was love. It was love that held him there. It was to reveal the depth of his love for us all that he died on the cross. And that's the great mystery, the great wonder, the great gift. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son who gave his life for us and to us from the altar of the cross. And when he rose from the dead, the wounds were still there. He showed us the price of love. He showed us the price of love in the same way that mother who had struggled with her son all through his early years of schooling into high school, she paid a price in her love for him. The son who takes off work, who stays home to help his mom and dad in their difficulty is paying a price. Not just money, but emotionally, spiritually as well. The nurse who puts her life on the line pays a price. And they all carry the wounds of love. You know, my sisters and brothers, when we think of the last judgment, we will pray the creed in just a couple of minutes and we'll talk about the Lord Jesus who will come to judge the living and the dead. And when he judges us, he's not going to ask us, what did you believe? He's not going to ask, what did you think? He's not going to say, how did you feel about me? He's going to say, show me your wounds. 
Let me see the price you paid to love others. Show me your wounds, he's going to ask. That, my sisters and brothers, is a whole other way of looking at the way we live in this world. That somehow the gospel and the cross teach us that there's a price that we pay for loving, but it's worth the price. It's worth it. And in the end, when we stand before the Lord, he's going to ask you and me, he'll say, Dave, show me the wounds. And I just pray that I'll have enough scars at the end that he'll say, well done, well done.